Hey everybody, welcome to I Got a Question. I'm Mikey and I'm gonna be answering this question that came in that said, how do I open up a conversation with someone about the dangers of certain media? It's a good question because inevitably this is gonna come up. We are so saturated in our culture with different types of media that you're bound to be around somebody that says, hey, why don't you go watch this movie with me or something? And it could be an awkward situation. It could be a sensitive topic for some people, but you know, if somebody's truly your friend, I think maybe they'll hear you out and kind of understand about certain things. You know, I wouldn't expect someone who's been in, in a war to watch a war movie with me. Maybe it's a triggering topic for them and, and I wouldn't pressure it. Well, why don't you watch it, you know? So that would be something where somebody would be understanding and sympathetic. Also, maybe if someone uh, had, had some kind of traumatic thing happen in their life, you wouldn't expect them to watch a movie that would bring up those types of triggering topics. So I think this is a time where you can kind of plant a seed and just say, well, I don't really want to watch that type of movie. And if they say, well, why, why not? You can always say, well, it just, it does something to my spirit. It just, it's, it's full of violence. It's full of sexual immorality. And these things go against what I believe. And then if the conversation continues, you can share a little more, especially if the person's a Christian and they identify with your beliefs. Jesus in Matthew 5, 27 and 28 said, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that whosoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. So Jesus talks about the topic of sin, how it starts in the mind. It's not just the act of committing it with your hands. He says that if you look at a woman with lust, you've actually committed adultery already with her in your mind. He continues to say, if your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you, for it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. That's Matthew 5, 29. So Jesus is even saying that things that you see with your eyes can cause you to face judgment. And he's warning you, look, if you're having trouble with something that you're looking at, it's better for you to just pluck out your own eye. And I don't recommend that you do that, I think that we can pray to the Holy Spirit to give us victory, to have victory over the sins in our life and also the things that we put before our eyes. One barometer you can use to judge what you should and shouldn't put before your eyes is, does it glamorize sin? Does it break any of the Ten Commandments? I actually heard one pastor say that if we turned off the TV every time that a commandment was broken, you'd probably never turn your TV on again. Think about a person who's peeping, a peeping Tom through a window at a couple in their bedroom. Is that a good thing? But yet, we will sit there in a theater, eat popcorn, and look through a window and see the same things. We're watching sin take place on this screen and we just justify it with, well, it's fictional, it's not really real. But when you look at the situation a different way, where a person is really looking in through a window at a real act, we look at it totally different. Why is that, you know? So I think that if you have these friends that are trying to get you to watch things with them, I think they'll be understanding if you just you know, approach it with a sensible, reasonable explanation like that. Um, in Psalm 101.3, it says, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. The Bible is giving us good counsel about not putting wicked things before our eyes because the things that we watch do have effect on us. There's all kinds of scientific reasons of how things that you see, your brain actually thinks that you're doing that, that your brain thinks that you're actively participating in what you are viewing. And that's exactly what Jesus said, that when you look at a woman with lust, you've already committed adultery with her in your heart. I think Jesus was onto something. Romans 1.32 says, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. This verse is saying that you don't have to actually participate in the sins, but just taking pleasure in seeing that, whether it's on screen or maybe you're at a parade that's glamorizing something sinful, if you're taking pleasure in that, you're just as guilty as being the one committing it. So I think it's very important what we put in front of our eyes, and I think that we should plant that seed into our friends and, and give them something to think about as well. Another thing you can do is share one of our videos with your friend. If you know your friend is into a certain show and we've talked about it, why don't you just share it with them and say, what do you think about this? And put the ball in their court. You're not saying, hey, I believe this is true. I think you should stop watching this. Just say, hey, I saw this video and it's 
pretty interesting. I wanted to see what you had to think about it and get the feedback from them. And then you can have a conversation and, and you have no idea. Maybe that'll open up the door and you might totally see a transformation. Philippians 4, 8 gives us some good counsel. It says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. So I think if you walk into your friend's house and they're watching something with a bunch of violence or adultery, you know, you could say, hey, could we, could we watch something else? Maybe something funny, you know, it doesn't mean you can't watch anything. I mean, I, I like to watch funny pet videos with my daughter and even videos about people who are giving to the homeless. And it, I walked away from watching those videos with a whole different mindset. Like I went, it made me, it inspired me to want to do those things. It inspired me to want to give to people and brighten somebody else's day. So that's just proof that the media does have an effect on you. Just think about how different the world could actually be if instead of glamorizing violence and witchcraft and adultery on, on television, if the airwaves were just pumped out full of people doing acts of kindness, people you know, out there playing with their kids, I think the world could be a much more beautiful place if we really focused on those things, whatsoever things are lovely and true and beautiful. I hope this helped you guys out some. Continue to give us your questions. We enjoy answering these and I hope that this was beneficial, something that you can pass on and actually put into action. And remember, you living your life a certain way is a seed planet that's a witness that you can actually help transform somebody else's life just by living out the Christian walk. We love you and we'll see you guys next time on I Got a Question.